Hi everybody, I'm uh, going to redo a video that I've done uh, many times before. So not only on my own channel, I have one video, it didn't come out good because my microphone wasn't working, but I've um, mentioned this a couple times on Lewis's channel, and um, I don't think these videos have had enough reach, uh, because people are still making this mistake with their MacBook. So let's say you have a MacBook, uh, something happened to it, you want to open up the bottom of it. So this is my MacBook. Uh, it's the only one I have closed at the moment to show you this. So we need to take the bottom cover off of this. First thing I'm going to do, take my screwdriver with my pentalobe tip, or pentalobe screwdriver, whatever you got. Magnet on it, makes it easy to not lose your screws. We're going to take out all of our screws. Now, if you haven't done this before, pay attention to what screws are coming out of where. The screws are different sizes. Each screw has its own place in here. These are the same size, these are the same size, these are the same size. So you have three different size screws for this. <clears throat> Not vitally important, but you can wind up dimpling the keyboard side of the MacBook if you put the screws in the wrong spot. But the important part of this is, now that I have the screws out, I need to take this bottom cover off. This is not like the old MacBooks where you just pull the bottom cover off. The old MacBooks had either little um, magnets here holding the bottom cover down still, or they had uh, little tiny clips, a little plastic clip in the middle, popped off easy, no problem. The newer MacBooks are completely different. So the first thing we need to do for getting this off So I have my bottom case, no screws. I'm going to take my finger, my, just my fingernail, and lift up a little bit on the case. And you can see that it separates a little bit. It opens up. I'm going to get some more fingernails underneath it. No tools. There's no need to use any tools. You can use, if you don't have fingernails, you could use a um, suction cup on this. But all you need is a couple fingernails, if you don't bite them all the way down to nothing. Nice and easy. Get your fingernails underneath it and pull straight back on it. And it pops up. There's a, there's a clip right here. And it pops right out. There's another one right here, so we're going to do the same thing. We, don't, we could just slide our fingers underneath it over from over here. Pop. There you go. We're not done yet. Completely different operation now. So these were pops that come straight up. Now right here you have fingers that are latched underneath some aluminum. We need to pull this cover that way while pushing the MacBook that way, or at least trying to hold the MacBook steady. So you're gonna lose some, some skin on your knuckles the first time you do this. After, you, after a couple times, you'll get used to it. That's it. That's how you take the bottom cover off of the MacBook. What you do not do when you're at this situation here, and it's not coming up, you do not take a screwdriver, or a paint stripper, or a pry bar, and shove it in to this little crack and pry the thing open. We do not take a screwdriver and pry this open and have the screwdriver shoot across the logic board. I will show you again. slide, look at where the logic board is. Right here. Right at the very end. If you take a screwdriver and put it in here, you will damage your logic board. Do not put a screwdriver into the side of your MacBook to open it. If you do put your screwdriver into the side of your MacBook to open it, this is what happens. We have here a MacBook that was, it came to a shop for a screen replacement. It left the shop not working. The fans are on high and the machine is just running slow and not working. This is what happens when you use a screwdriver. This is a smaller laptop. This is the 13 inch. This screw right here, this is what clips on the back of the, the uh, back cover. This is what's holding it down. <clears throat> so as you're pulling it back, you're feeling that resistance of the, the back cover wanting to stay there. Resist 
with all your might resist the urge to put a screwdriver into your MacBook. Just with all your concentration, do not reach for the screwdriver. Do not put it underneath the cover. I promise you that if you just pull on the cover with your fingers, I promise you it will release. It will pop off. Do not put a screwdriver into there. But if you do, and you have broken this, you have me. I can fix this. This is somebody's attempt. Somebody have seen my videos before, has seen me do this before. But they did something fundamentally wrong here. How's it going, everybody? Finally looked over, over at the chat. Nice to see you guys. Kind of making this to as a recording too, because this this is going to be uh, cut up a little bit and um, made into other videos on my channel. So just the opening part is going to be its own video. It, it, I, it needs to be spread out. People that see this, people that open their MacBook, I hope they find this. Do this to open your MacBook. I'm going to try to make clickbaity title, everything, try to get people not to do this damage. So, there is something very fundamentally wrong with this, this job here. If you go to my, um, my Google listing, you'll find the very first picture I ever upload is a finished one of these that I did. So I'll, I'll just clean this up. I have to clean this all up and everything, make it, make it usable again. Somebody tell me, somebody spot, what is the fundamental flaw here? What is, what is keeping this from working? Why does this still have high fans? Why is this not working? Think about what we're looking at. So this chip is supposed to be face down on it. These solder points are supposed to be here where there's holes for solder points that are now missing. So if this chip is now facing the opposite direction than what it did, if this chip, it was here and we flipped it upside down and put it on its back, then this here should go here. 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 We're mirror image. The closest one is the closest one. We just picked it up and flipped it on its back. So this is this pin. This is this pin. This one all the way over here is that pin. going to remove all of this, get all this out of here. I'll take this chip up. We'll make sure that the chip is facing in the right direction. And we'll just do this all over again. Unfortunately, this is a um, rather common repair. <laughs> I, I hate to say that. 
And it's not, it's not from people opening their own MacBooks. People don't usually open their own MacBooks. This is other, other technician shops. So many other shops have sent us MacBooks like this when I worked for Lewis. I've done a couple dozen of these dead bugs. Okay, so this chip has no indication of what pin one is from the underneath. So I need to pull this off of the board and we'll see where pin one is. Ooh, that's a lot of glue. So how is everybody tonight? Later stream than usual for me. I wind up ruining this chip and I'm gonna have to get a new one. Would not be a problem. Let's actually get this out of the machine. Yeah, you crazy glue the chip upside down. Usually just a smaller dot than this, but yeah, that, that's, that's good. You crazy glue the chip down, and then we work on soldering everything. Yeah, I think I need to put some heat on it. That's why I took it out of the, uh, out of the casing. Now the whole chip is breaking apart. Let's make sure it was in the right orientation. So it did not move out of my tweezers. I'm just going to flip it over. So pin one down here. So let's see. So that, that's the way it was. Didn't come out of my tweezers. I didn't drop it. And I have pin one here. Let's see on the schematic if that's proper. Pin one down there, yep. That's what we're looking at on the schematic. Okay, that was correct. Now I'll clean this up a little bit more and we'll put new new crazy glue down. Actually, no, I, I don't even trust this chip. I'm getting a new one. Okay, let's take a donor board that has a chip. All right, this is what it's supposed to look like here. Well, almost. That's not supposed to be ripped off the board. But it's a donor board, that's what happens. So let's get this chip off of here.
Okay, now I want to clean off all the flux off of that. Flux will keep glue from sticking. So that's the way it's supposed to go. We're just going to flip it directly over. Now, while I'm working with it, just in case it moves or anything, I'm going to indicate pin 1 for myself. It's pin 1. I'm just going to take my dental tool. A little scratch where pin 1 is. Now I know where pin 1 is. So if I lose control of the chip, it flips around, I don't like that. I don't have to worry about flipping it back over and figuring out my orientation. I have a really hairy uh, Q-tip today. There we go. So as you can see, upside down. That easy to lose your orientation. There you go. Why not the other side? Because it's too close to the edge then. Then we're right on the edge of the board and there's even greater chance of somebody knocking it off without even actually putting a uh, pry tool in there. We don't want something this big that close to the edge. This is how small the chip is, too, that this is the tip of a, uh, what seems to be a plugged up <laughs> crazy glue. There you go, I got it flowing now. Now, don't mind me while I breathe on the crazy glue. All right. Now, let's take a look at uh, things that were going on here. So, I see they didn't go for the points. Yeah, they didn't scrape down to the points in here for that. So let's see what those are supposed to be on. Okay, so the two end pieces are ground. Okay, so the ground plane that, that's there is just fine. And then we have ground here. So those three are all ground. Yeah, that's fine with that. That upper right was ground too. So we don't have to worry about that one either. Yes. This one that's completely missing and all it is is that green dot in the middle of there. That would be the via that's going to a ground plane. So that was ground, so that's fine. <clears throat> this one's a nice via here. That one's there. That one's there. These two are on either side of here. There, and that one's that via. Okay. So this one to here. This to here. This to here. This to here. Oops, you're not seeing any of that. Okay, so for the bottom row, this one right here, 
goes to here, closest, then this one to here, this one to here, this one to there. And on the top, this, this, and this are ground. And this one to there, this one to there, this one to there. Alright, so let's have at it. Crazy glue should be set enough. Came across a Premier 2803. I guess it's a dielectric meter. Any idea what it is or what of who would want one? Dielectric meter. Sounds like something maybe for automotive automotive ignition systems. I don't know. Dielectric meter. Is it for testing um, uh, the insulation on a wire? Something like that. Never used a dielectric meter, so not sure exactly what one would be. Let's go ahead with the bottom first. Some fume extraction now, because we're doing a lot of uh, smoking solder. We want to keep everything tight to the board as much as possible. You don't want things lifted up in the sky. I think this one is a little bit tall, but it's up against the chip. This one we come straight down to the board and across the board to where it's getting soldered. Oh, there. I'm welcome. T 
Today we are seeing the effects of what happens when you open your MacBook ROM. doesn't have enough solder on it. I'll get some more solder on my tip. There you go. I place the wire on one side and then I use a dental tool and my tweezers to help shape it. You don't want wires just running all over the place willy-nilly like. Okay, I'm not happy with the first one that I put on there, so I'm going to be taking that off and redoing it. Exactly, long spudger damage. Most likely, craftsman screwdriver damage. You can see somebody using a framing claw hammer to open up their MacBook someday. But this isn't really dreaded. I enjoy doing this work. So especially with a test point like this that I just soldered to, I don't try to stress the um, wire off like I do with the larger points to break it off, just wiggle it. This I want to actually cut because I don't want to pull that test point out of the board or anything. Okay, let's go across the ground, I guess, we'll do next. If we look at the schematic again, we have ground, ground, and this one's ground up over here. So this is, we're looking at the board. You always have to remember we're looking at the board here, we're not looking at the chip. So if we look at the board, ground, ground, we know the two middle ones are ground, and then this top one is ground which is this top one. So I could tie these two together, and I'll just pop right back up over here and tie this one to it. Then I'll come down and go right over to that. Is this ground too? I could just come straight to here if this is ground. I don't know why one was tapped all the way over here if this is ground. Let me check on that. I have my multimeter. Put it on beep. Touching ground. This is definitely ground. This is ground. Is this ground? 
that is ground. So you can't always trust that the um, what you're looking at is ground. So when we look at these, um, the first layer here, this is all copper underneath the uh, solder masking. And usually you see something large like this and you say, oh, well, that's, that's going to be a ground plane. So we, we, can, we can just hook up to this. This is going to be a ground plane. Not all the time is something that's large and copper like that a ground plane. Because when we look over here, like, yeah, this is part of the ground plane, but then we have this large copper trace. This whole area right here is not ground. This is all some kind of power up here. And you'll find that all over the board, especially in areas like this where it's separated by a couple traces that are running through it, this doesn't necessarily have to be ground. So you have to test it before you're going to trust that that's ground. And you definitely dread it for somebody that thought that they were going to open up their own MacBook and fix something. They bought a screen off of eBay, so they want to just change the screen. Well, if you do this, you thought you were going to save $100 by not having a shop change your screen. Well, now you're going to be spending $300 to get a shop to fix what you messed up. But what, make, what really makes me sad about it is that most of the time this, is, this damage is from another shop. It's not from the, whoever at their house that wanted to fix their own MacBook. The, the people at shops are doing this damage all the time. Still, like I, I understand a couple years ago when this design was new. 2016 is when they first came out with this and nobody was used to it. So fine, I understand some people doing that back then. That this is how many years later you need to know how to open a MacBook. And we work our way across on this. Yeah, that's probably a valid point, Hi Hi. Hi Hi says it's probably more prevalent in shops because of the Dunning Kruger effect. Uh, yeah, in the wrong direction. People think, uh, I'm a shop, I know what I'm doing, I, I've done this before, I've opened up plenty of things. This is a really weak trace that I'm hooking up to. I'm thinking about just going up to the via instead. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I don't like this trace at all. Let's go right to the via. I get some more flux on there. Oh, you guys can't see that. Yeah, a lot of people that are at home, they they take the time to watch a video or something. People working in shops don't care, I guess. I mean, I still watch videos. If I'm going to be opening up something that I have no idea on how to open up, I'm watching a video or at least uh, some kind of guide, step-by-step -step guide. 
I'd rather see a step-by-step -step guide than, than watch a video. Albert, if you're here watching this video, if you watched it from the beginning, you are now qualified to open up a MacBook. Just follow this video exactly, and you are qualified to open up a MacBook. Oh, you don't want any MacBook on your hands? Yeah, I, I got a lot of MacBook on me, so... I'm immune to MacBook now. So I'm really close and going around that test point. I'm going to clip this wire down. I don't want so much um, exposed. Okay, that is a dead bug. That is a properly done dead bug. So let me go put this in the ultrasonic cleaner real quick. I'll be right back. One moment, please. Headphone warning. About to get some ultrasonic noise. I don't know how bad this mic picks it up. I should leave my mic over here and go look at the bar. Noise now. Okay, I dipped the edge into the ultrasonic cleaner. Now I'll take it into my dark room where I have a tap of deionized water. So I will run it under deionized water. And then give it some squirts of 99% isopropanol alcohol. Turn on the exhaust fan in here. Okay. Now we can see what it all looks like.
Uh, let me set up the hot glue gun while I'm at it. Yeah, everything in a MacBook has conformal coating. That's what the black is of the board. Solder resists, conformal coating, same thing. All right, now we uh, get really close. We get it so close to this. Inspect it. I'll see the other side. I gotta come off the table. Where am I? Oh, there it is. Now I will just conformal coat any loose ends that we've got going on here. The whole thing will get sealed in a dot of hot glue. That's how I like to end it. Now let's put some dots of the green conformal coating on a couple of key things. Connection. I'll seal this back up. I'll seal that up. Seal that up. Seal the ends of these. What is this? Because there's a via right there. I wonder if that goes anywhere. Uh, that's 3B3SO, so that should be, yeah, all over the place on that. Yeah, testing it's a good idea, but I'm pretty sure that there's not going to be anything wrong with this right here. So if there's something else wrong with sensors or something else wrong with the board, I don't think there's going to be anything wrong right here. give a little bit of extra conformal coating right where the wires are crossing each other. Get the one other connection. That ground is fine. Where that crosses, I'd like some conformal coating on.
Okay. Dim your eyes. Yes, the magnet wire is all enamel coated. But it is very small and very delicate. Any kind of abrasion will take it off. That's why I like to coat the wire where they're where they're going over each other. I still like a little bit of extra protection. So the this conformal coating will lock them in so that they can't rub on each other in any way while we do the rest of the operation. Anel. Everybody say hello to Anel. get a dot of hot glue over top of it. Like a... And then we'll use hot air and my dental tool to get it to go exactly where we want. So I want good adherence to the board. So I want the board to warm up. Okay. Now it is completely sealed in a bubble of hot glue. So also, when you put hot glue over something, you want to make sure that it's um, extremely dry. So heating the board while you heat the hot glue and everything, that, that makes sure that everything is dry. I didn't seal any moisture underneath there. And then as that cools off, that'll get a little bit more opaque. Yeah, now there's no way that uh, somebody else can knock it off as easily, hopefully. Stop using these to open your MacBook. This is not what you use to open a MacBook. Or this. Don't, don't stick this in your MacBook. This is for floors and walls and spackle, opening paint cans, cleaning your paintbrush. This is for nails. If you really need something to pop the back case over, oh, open, get a get a suction cup. Get some fingernails. That's all you need is some fingernails. Yes, this this, this is for this is for breaking car windows or 
beating the person that just broke your car window. <laughs> All right. So that's a dead bug. It's uh, something that a lot of technicians don't want to do. They, they don't want to see this come in. <clears throat> they don't want to work on it. If, if you're in a shop, you don't want to work on that, you don't have the skills to work on that, you can send it to me. <clears throat> if you're in uh, the New Jersey area, you can bring it here, mail it to me. I'll take care of this, no problem. So, that's a late, later in the day stream. What time is it? Almost 9 o'clock. I'll go watch some playoff hockey. Rangers are playing tomorrow, but other, the other teams are playing tonight. There should be a game tonight by now. Probably a game earlier. Well, have a good night, everybody. Let's go, Rangers. See you later.